Hi there! In this video, we're going to talk about the VLOOKUP function. Now let me show you an example of how the VLOOKUP function can come into play. What we've got here are four people, and this is the lunch that they ate on each of the five days of the week. Now, one question is, what did Katie eat for lunch on Wednesday? And the VLOOKUP function can be used to answer that question. Now honestly, we could take a look here and we can see that Katie on Wednesday ate pasta, so it's very easy for us to simply to answer the question as it is. But if, and not even if, when, when you have a huge data set that spans across many, many number of columns and many, many number of rows, you might not have the luxury of time nor patience to sift through and find the answer to such a question. And when that is the case, Use the VLOOKUP function because that will help you get the job done. So in this case, we're going to use the VLOOKUP function to answer this question. But before we do that, let's understand the components of the VLOOKUP function. So VLOOKUP, what does that stand for? It stands for Vertical Lookup. And what this function will do is it will search vertically to the right of your search entity within a data set. Now, what does that mean? All right, let's break this down. What the VLOOKUP will do, it will return, it returns a value located X number of columns to the right of your search entity within a defined data set. It sounds complicated, but hear me out here. We're gonna walk through an example which will make this come to life. X number of columns, search entity, and data set. These are the three elements that will make up the arguments of your formula. Let's walk through what the formula would look like. VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP. The first argument is your search entity right here. Second argument is your data set. Third is the X number of columns. And finally, there is a fourth option, or the fourth argument, which we'll call the closest match argument. And we will go into depth of what that means. Essentially, for closest match, if it's stated as true, your formula will try to find the closest match of your search entity within a data set. If it's false, in other words, if this closest match option is listed as false, the formula will only find the exact match only. Okay, so we will understand what that means in a moment. Okay, so now this, keep this in mind now, this is the framework of the formula. This is how we set the formula up. Okay, so let's apply this right now to our example. What did Katie eat for lunch on Wednesday? Equals VLOOKUP. It's a good start. The search entity, now in this case, the search entity is stated in our question. It's Katie, because we want to know what she ate for lunch on Wednesday. So we're going to use this function to search for Katie within a defined data set. This here is our defined data set. It includes the four people's names followed by the lunches that they ate uh, from Monday through Friday. So our defined data set is considered cells A2 through F5. Our third argument is X, which is the number of columns to the right of your search entity. Now in this case, we want this formula to search for columns, uh, column D, which is Wednesday. Now column D is represented as the one, two, three, the fourth column. Now it's very tempting to say that it should be the third column, right? Because you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's the third day of the week. No, keep this in mind. Remember, whenever we want to define the number of columns, you have to include the column where the search entity is. So in this case, the search entity Katie is located here in column A. This is considered column one. Monday, column two, Tuesday, column three. So Wednesday is considered column number four. And finally, for our closest match argument, we're going to say false 
because we want this formula to return and find the exact match only defined by Katie within this column here. So if you click enter, just as we would expect, the answer is pasta. Katie ate pasta for lunch on Wednesday. Now what if, instead of having Katie as a search entity, we had KK, which is her nickname? In this case, we do not have an exact match because there is no KK here in column A. However, if we were to change this closest match argument to true, what this formula will then do is it will look through this data set and it will find the closest match to KK. And in fact, the closest match to KK is Katie. And so if we were to click enter, you do find that the answer remains the same. Now one caveat, whenever you use the true option here, you have to make sure that the data set here is sorted um, because what the formula will do is it will try to find the closest match within a sorted data set. And as you can see, this data set has been sorted alphabetically. Okay. So perfect. So what the VLOOKUP function does, again, is that it searches vertically to the right of your search entity. And so in this case, if we want to ask what Katie ate for lunch on Thursday, as you can see here, she didn't have lunch on Thursday. If we were to apply that formula, the only thing we would need to change is the number of columns because KK, in this case, is our search entity that will remain the same. Data set is fine. And so the number of columns would be five, right? Because we start here with a search entity column of one, two, three, four, five. Thursday is five. And we want to keep this search closest match option as true because, again, we don't have the exact match uh, within the search entity. And when you click on enter, just as we'd expect, a blank comes up. So the VLOOKUP function will return whatever you set based on the parameters or the criteria that you included within that function. So you will notice that we have applied the VLOOKUP function in uh, some of our applications. For instance, if you take a look at our application on the random prize drawing, the winner here is based off of a VLOOKUP function. So take a look now that you understand what the VLOOKUP function is, take a look at this random prize drawing application. And now you will be able to decode exactly how that winner is determined. Okay, we'll see you next time.